I um, am a proud South Sacramentan. I am a daughter of Hmong refugees. Um, the oldest of 16 children. Uh, so you can imagine at a young age, I, I learned the importance of stepping up to take care of family and community. And that's really what I've known my whole life. Um, and so, you know, I uh, threw my hat in the, in the race because I think it's time to have bold and courageous leadership at City Hall. Oftentimes our neighborhoods are left behind and it's really important to make sure that um, every a residence and every neighborhood um, is, is uplifted and that we don't um, leave anyone behind, so. My parents came here as refugee. My mom's family actually settled in Meadowview and my father's family settled in Oak Park. So I actually grew up in Meadowview and Oak Park. I am a Sacramento straight up born and raised on 16 of us. <laughs> so yeah, I'm the oldest. So I have uh, six sisters and nine brothers. So it's been really exciting. I mean, this campaign has been really inspiring because of just so many amazing, incredible volunteers. Um, you know, while the campaign is not it's not officially certified yet. Um, you know, Pastor Les did call this past Saturday to concede and offer his congratulations. I think the word uh, the word that I'm feeling is really just um, humbled, humbled that the voters um, gave us the lead and giving and they're giving me an opportunity to serve them, um, to serve a community that I love. Um, and I'm also just really proud of our team. Uh, you know, our theme from the beginning has been heart and hustle, and it was an incredibly close race. And I honestly do believe uh, that the reason why we prevail was because it's boots on the ground. As a community organizer, uh, I know that elections are won by ground game, and that was our strength. And in, in the campaign, that's my strength as a community organizer. So I'm just so proud of, of our team. Um, yeah, I mean, from the beginning of the campaign, uh, I did share with all our volunteers and supporters that the campaign uh, would be won or lost by the heart and hustle they give. And so, um, you know, I've been so inspired because everyone's given their heart and their hustle. And, and um, that's why this victory actually belongs to them. It doesn't belong to me, but it belongs to, you know, every elder uh, who came here, who uh, cooked for our volunteers pre-COVID. You know, there's a role for everyone in the campaign. So, you know, I had folks on the campaign that didn't speak English, but they cooked, um, you know, they stuffed envelopes. Um, there's a role for everyone. And I would also say when I go to City Hall, that's the same um, work ethic that I will bring, um, that there's a role for everyone at City Hall. So, well, I will also share with you um, the largest voting block in District 8 um, are folks ages 18 and 34. And I'm just incredibly proud, um, you know, to all the young folks out there who uh, defy the odds and expectations that young folks don't vote, they did in District 8. They're the largest voting block. And so, you know, social media, it was a big part of it, right, to mobilize our young people. Um, I know that two weeks uh, before November 3rd, when we looked at our data, only 20% of voters ages 18 and 34 had voted. And so my sister, who um, is a young, is she's young, she's in her early 20s. Um, she goes to school at UC San Diego, but had to come home because of COVID. So she lives with me, did a video saying, our time is now, we need to vote. And so I could share you that video, but, um, you know, really, I think we had a, um, a strategic campaign to make sure we turn out young folks, um, because I know that we are the margin of victory. And you can see um, in this campaign, when the first vote, um, you know, came out, around 815, we were only 50 votes apart, right? And I think a lot of folks were really nervous. Um, I was nervous as well, um, but I just left it every, I left everything out in the field because um, that's that's what you got to do, right? If you give everything you got and you put it in the field, then you let, you let the field decide, right? Um, and so, you know, we've been on an upward uptick um, you know, in our vote count. And I, a big part of that is because of the hard and hustle of all the young folks of everyone uh, that's that has been part of this campaign. And so I'm, I'm just so proud of them. So that's awesome. Um, kind of describe your own like heart and hustle, you know, that kind of um, was contagious, I think, throughout your campaign, it seems like. Yeah. Um, where does that come from? So I would say a big part of it is my childhood, like being the oldest of 16 kids. I learned like at a young age that you gotta, you gotta hustle, you gotta work hard, right? And also growing up uh, in poverty and seeing firsthand the realities of how poverty impacted my family, you know, we had to, we had to work hard, making sure that you're passionate about what you do, that you love what you do, and that um, you can also be passionate, but if you, you also gotta put in the hard work. Um, and 
I, you know, I put the heart and hustle in everything that I do. And that's really important for me. I also know that the team will only work as hard as the candidate, right? And so I got to make sure that I'm going 110% um, so that when I go hard, the team sees that they go hard. Um, and so I, yeah, I'm a big believer believer of the heart and hustle thing. Um, you know, I definitely, um, when I get to city hall, um, there are kind of like three outlining things that, um, that I'm going to do. Uh, but what I do want to share, you know, you know, my priority, um, during this campaign, um, and, and moving forward is making sure, um, that we meet the needs of our families in our neighborhood. So equity and racial justice will be, uh, my priority, um, going into city hall. Um, but I know that when I get there, um, there are some things that um, that needs to needs to be done. So the first thing is, I understand it takes five votes uh, to get an item passed, right? So meeting with every council member will be a priority, so that I can learn and understand, you know, what their agenda is and what their priorities, even if it's in conflict with mine, right? I think finding common ground and um, you know working collaboration will be important. So you know, sitting down uh, with the mayor and also the council members is going to be very important for me. Um, the second piece is, you know. Um, uplifting every community voice because we also had folks in the community that I didn't get an, their endorsement or their vote, right? Pastor Lesson and also Gardnerd, um, you know, he ran a great campaign as well. So it's going to be important for me to make sure that folks who didn't endorse me during the campaign or didn't vote for me, that I also um, hear from those folks, right? Because um, it's important for me to co-create a collective a community agenda uh, to guide my priorities and how I'm going to execute. And so um, I'm also going to be reaching out to the, the voters who didn't vote for me and um, the uh, community folks that uh you know, may have endorsed my opponent. That's important for me because they are a part of, uh, of of the fabric of District 8. Um, and the third piece is, um, I think, assessing the city policies that we've already have in place and making sure we're not, um, and making sure uh, that we have guardrails to protect our most vulnerable from COVID and the current system that we have now at City Hall. I know as a community organizer and um, as an incoming council member, um, I understand that attending rallies and protests um, is just one part of the fight for equity and racial justice, um, but it also needs to be reflected in our policies, right? So that's, you know, protecting renters, that's making sure that we protect our small minority owned businesses, that's making sure that our youth and our families have access to basic city services, you know, how we budget and prioritize, um, uh, you know, it shows us what our values are. And so that's going to be really important to me. So the policy and the governing piece is, is going to be critical. So um, Asian Americans is one of the fastest growing groups in the United States and here locally in Sacramento. Um, it's really important to have leaders that reflect the population they serve. And so that's the reason why um, I think this win is also historical is that the first time uh, voters are, um, you know, have decided and they're sending uh, an Asian American woman to, to City Hall. Um, I will also share with you that in District 8, we're incredibly diverse, you know, 30% Latinos, 28, 29% Asian American Pacific Islanders, and then about 21, 22% uh, white and African American, right? And so we are an incredibly diverse community. Um, but what I will also share with you is that while the Asian American and Pacific Islanders have unique challenges, uh, for example, language access and immigration, um, for me as a millennial, as a Hmong daughter, as an Asian American woman, um, I want folks to know that for me, you know, the API agenda, how I see it, um, is also equity and racial justice. Oftentimes when you look at political issues, they're seen as binary, you know, it's very white and black. Um, but as Asian Americans, I think we occupy a very unique space um, and an interesting sectional space, right? We're incredibly diverse uh, in languages that we speak. Uh, we live in multi-generational household. Um, we have a unique experience, and I think uh, we uh, we are ready to serve an incredible, a diverse community. For any young uh, Asian Americans out there, um, you know, you, I want you to know uh, for young folks, for young API folks, that there is a community that is hungry for your leadership and that your dreams are never too big um, and that my Vang will be right here supporting you. Um, and so this win um, is not just mine and our team, but it's for um, all the little minds out there, right? Um, I think if you would have asked uh, third grade, fourth grade my, um, you know, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I don't think she would have said, you know, council member, <laughs> um, right? Um, 
And um, actually someone did ask me that question. A teacher did ask me that question. You know, you always have these projects in school, like what do you wanna be when you grow up? And um, I said, I wanted to be like mom and dad. Like I wanted to take care of my family, you know? And in some ways, when I think about it, um, I am doing that, right? Like I am doing what third grade, um, fourth grade my wanted to do when she grows up is to take care of family and community. Um, and so I will tell her you're going to fulfill that. Um, and you're, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought about running for office, but, you know, for every um, little girl out there, um, you know, that your hopes are never, you know, your dreams are never too big and that, you know, there's folks like me ready, ready for you. Um, there's an entire community hungry for your leadership.